If you are new to the channel, then subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for further notification. Okay, student, welcome you all to this new lecture in the method of differentiation and the basic level. In this lecture, we will see some of the basic definitions of the differentiation, some theorems of differentiation, and derivatives of some standard functions. Okay, then let's see this. Okay, so the topic is method of differentiation basic. So if we start with this one, so this is the basic definition which we have already seen in case of differentiability also. If x and x plus h, h is a very small number which belongs to the domain of the function y equal to fx. So these are standard uh, terms and conditions. Then the derivative of f denoted by f dash x, there are denotions are f dash x or dy dx, you can write it in both ways is equal to or you can write it y dash also sometimes it is written y dash that also means differentiation of y limit h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x by h this graphical representation we have seen already in case of differentiability what does it represents it represents lots of things that comes under application of derivative that we are not doing here we are doing just method of differentiation how to differentiate what are the applications one application we have seen it represents the tangent that we have considered in case of differentiability. There are lots of other applications we will see in that application of derivative AOD chapter. So derivative of a function, this is in general differentiation of the function just dy dx at any point x, arbitrary point. Now if you are differentiating at a particular point A, then what you are doing, if you go to that graph, if you are differentiating at a particular point A, then you will move a little bit either in this direction or this direction, you do not know depending on h. So that is f of a plus h, the new direction minus f of a. What is the change in y? This is f of a plus h and this is the corresponding change in x. This is a, this position is a plus h. So this change in x x is this small change in h. Correspondingly, there will be change in y. So if you change your x, how much your y will change? That is rate of change also one of the another application. So there are lots of meaning we can include uh, conclude from this graph because if this is a and this is a plus h, so you are changing x correspondingly y is changing so rate of change of y with respect to f if you change x how y will change so this is another application that also all comes under the topic application of derivative so what is the definition then f of a plus h minus f of a by h or you can also write it x is tending towards a that is any variable x which is going very close to a very close to means it can come from this side it can come so it is coming from this side so it is very close to a it is also very close to a so at that very close point x which is near to a h is you can see it is either way so it is very close to a so x is going a means x is very close to a the idea is same so you can come x from this side you can come x from this side so very close at that position what is the height fx minus what is original fa so that is change in y divided by change in x x change in x means suppose you are here x you are a so it is x minus a you can go either way so both of these are the definition of the derivative of a function at a particular point a so it is written as f dash a or dy dx at a or this also written as y dash under bracket a y dash under bracket means differentiation at x equal to a. this is at x equal to a now you have to think in on which variable you are differentiating that is very important differentiation you are differentiating with respect to x this is x axis you are changing x then you are changing seeing y so all the definitions are given in terms of changing in x. Thinking about that we are differentiating with respect to x. So all these definition of derivative are also known as first principle of derivative. Now some of the theorems of derivatives. So these symbols d dx, d dx, this is just like a your plus. You have understood what is the meaning of plus, plus means summation, this is symbol, minus. So d by dx, that is no other meaning is there, that d, d is cancelling one back, no. This is a symbol. Just a symbol, just like your plus symbol, this is a symbol. This means you will be doing differentiating with respect to x. Whom you will differentiate, you will differentiate y. So you write y. So in short, we write dy dx. But actually we are doing ddx of, this is my symbol, ddx of y. Actual symbol will be this one. You are doing differentiation of this one. Suppose you are adding plus 5. So you write plus 5, plus is symbol. So yeah, this d dx is symbol of y. It means just means you will be differentiating y with respect to x. So be very careful. This is not dy dx. This is generally we write it in this fashion. It means that you will be differentiating y with respect to x. So this is symbol and this is just y is just residing with it so that you are operating. This operation is done on this y with respect to x. What is the meaning of with respect to x? That means you will change over x and you will see what is the change in y. Suppose u and b are two derivable functions of x, that means you will be differentiating with respect to x, then d dx of u plus minus b is d dx of u du dx plus dv dx. So you can define 
so you can segregate this one you can open this bracket plus this plus differentiation of this k into u k is some constant so constant you can take out you do the differentiation of du dx because constant if you change your x also there will be no change in y so constant differentiation you will see basically if it is a single simple constant then it is zero you will see some of the standard differentiation just for now you remember this one if it is a constant into function constant will be coming out then differentiation of that function k is any constant u into v this is known as product rule two functions are in the product form then the definition theorem is treat one as a constant suppose u is treat constant then differentiation of v plus there is no minus kindly correct it plus you treat another one as a constant v then you differentiate the other one so one constant another differentiation plus the thing that you have differentiated that will be constant now second one will be differentiation so it is product rule so u by v this is known as divide rule so this is quotient rule or divide divide rule so it is v square always denominator square then here it will be very mandatory the denominator should be fast because it is here minus so if you change it orientation one minus will give you a wrong answer but here it is plus you can do this one first this one later you can treat any one as a your constant then you do differentiation of another one any one you can take for the first time as a constant but here it should be very careful if you are writing v square so you can remember it there so you are writing v square so it should start with b so b should constant the denominator should be constant then you do the differentiation of denominator minus the numerator will be constant differentiation of denominator why are provided that this denominator should not be equal to zero another most important formula in differentiation suppose y is f of u or u is a function of x that means y is a function of g of x f of g of this is composite function that means one function inside another function f of u and u is a function of g so y is indirectly function of x via this f and g so this is a composite function that means one function inside another function something of for go forward so for that type of function you think it of coconut what do you do coconut we, we just take out first the outer layer then you go inside so likewise you go deeply inside first you take the outer layer then no, next moment so you take out one by one layers so that's the idea first you do the the dy dx is dy du you treat, you treat this one as a you first differentiate f with respect to u then you differentiate u with respect to x so first the outer layer is this one f that is with respect to u then the inner one g g is itself means u so ultimately you can think u you get cancel you are getting dy dx but this is not thinking not don't think that actually it is cancelling out so some examples i have taken for this one and this specific rule is known as chain rule very important rule suppose y is equal to sin square x so what we can write it is sin x whole square so basically how many types of functions are there we have already discussed earlier also there are algebraic function which is x square x cube all this there are trigonometric functions sin s cos x tan x there are inverse trigonometric functions sin inverse cos inverse tan inverse there are exponential function e to the power x a to the power x inverse trigonometry sin inverse x trigonometry sin x algebra x square plus 2 something of this version and there are logarithm function which is log x basically there are these three four type uh, five six types of functions are there so you can see this is an sin x whole square so initial format is something square something square is always algebra so there is algebraic function and a trigonometry so these two functions are mixed here so it is composite you can think it of a function of x square which takes input and then squares it fx and another function which takes input as x output gives us sin x so it is f of sin of x what is f doing f is taking g as an input sin x as an input then it's giving as a square as output you can think what is the purpose of f what f do whatever input you give just take square so if you give input as a gx which is a sin x it itself as a function of x then it will square that one so sin x whole square so the which one is outer layer this square is an outer layer sin x is inside so first you do the outer layer that means of this one what is the differentiation of x square you will just now little just after this one those who know that you know it clearly x to the power n this one n x to the power n minus 1 so x square is 2 x to the power n minus 1 so here this will be treated as x sin x so it is 2 x 2 minus 1 of that algebraic format then into that inside one the dx of sin x so it will be 2 sin x and then cos x one more example sin x square now here fx is sin x gx is square so f of g of s what is the purpose of f whatever input it takes it takes sign of that one so if you are here input itself it is taking as x square and then sign of that x square 
so again outer one is sine here inside one is square so first you do the outer one differentiation of sine is cos taking x considering it is in sine x simple so it is cos x whatever it is there it will be. then you do differentiation of this one first you don't think about inner one just think about outer sine differentiation cos whatever there you write it then you will do the inside one ddx of x square that is 2 to the power 2x to the power 2 minus 1 see this this fashion this is the answer if you are taking differentiation of y then this is the answer now there are some of the formulas standard formulas for differentiation ddx of x to the power n algebraic n x to the power n minus 1 ddx of e to the power x that is exponential e to the power x e to the power x is a peculiar function whose differentiation integration both remains x now from where this formula comes this formula comes from this first principle if you apply sin x here and you apply here limit h tends to 0 sin of x plus h minus sin of x divided by h you will find that answer is cos x so don't think that from where these answers are coming these are coming if you apply this limit and you apply limit formula whatever you have understood from limit apply this one you will get it so instead of remembering if you apply in the limit then then also it will come but in the exam if you are taking limit of each one and you are writing the equations if there are lots of formulas it will it doesn't will not serve any purpose so you directly remember this formula that's why we remember directly this formula but all these formulas are coming from these limits only don't get confused so this becomes your standard formula e to the power x differentiation integration both is e to the power x e to the power x e to the power x log a a for any exponential function the base should be greater than zero we have already discussed in function so you can think here if we because a base is here e so it is log e to the base e which is 1 so that's why it is e to the power x ddx of log x 1 by x this is for the base e if it is base of a then in another base so it is 1 by x log this is known as also natural log ln if they write ln then you think that is log to the base e and log to the base a if it is log to the power a then what it uh, 1 by x log e to the base a so you remember this one this is for logarithm function this is for trigonometry function sin x is cos x cos x is minus sin x 10 x x square cot x minus cos square here cos x square x sec x sec x 10 x cos x x minus cos x cot x constant differentiation of any constant is zero that's what i was telling about this one so if it is a product form if you apply here product for rule this rule first you take q k constant differentiation of this one plus you take u constant differentiation of q what is differentiation of k zero so that's why that second term doesn't comes because you can apply product rule here k constant differentiation of the u plus u constant differentiation of k differentiation of k is zero so second term is missing here so you can prove this one from this one also if you like the video then press the like button and please give your valuable comments in the comment section